Christian Malik joins us now from J.P. Morgan, who's really been definitive on the how we get to a permanent $100 a barrel uh, plus. We've seen the demand questions, Ed Morris at Citigroup, Gaming out nicely, uh, Christian, $70, $80 a barrel, and suddenly we are higher. What is the single distinction that drives us to $120 a barrel? No spare capacity, in short, uh, Tom. I mean, we're seeing a repricing of oil to the marginal barrel, and it's away from OPEC. Um, I know it sounds controversial to say that on a day like OPEC meeting. It's away from OPEC, and it's going back into control of the majors who represent somewhere between 35 to 40 percent of the world's oil. And they're not spending, they're not investing at these levels, uh, which then begs the question, what price will they spend? Will they grow their production um, and reinvest into those long-term projects? And I think we're going to need a significantly higher higher price, which in some ways is potentially what OPEC is trying to do today. They're trying to defend right. not only the front end, but the back end. The trying of OPEC, I have the memory of 1986, oil plunging 24% is my quick mathematics. How close is the cartel to a 1986? I think in terms of how close they are, that will all depend on how demand uh, responds to the, the current price. And uh, and we know that they're arguably looking for a higher price, potentially closer to where their fiscal break-evens are. Ultimately, it's not just the break-even of the countries. It's also what they want in terms of defending social reform. And we know there's a lot of issues at the moment with high energy prices. So that price uh, level versus what the U.S. wants uh, suggests there's arguably a price war uh, that's emerging between these two continents. But in the end, end, um, if demand can respond at 120 to 130, uh, which is our house view, then I don't necessarily see um, uh, demand collapsing. And then it's all about supply. It's a supply-driven crisis, which is ultimately where our super cycle thesis projects for the next five to seven years. Where are we in terms of the U.S. as a swing producer at this point, given the lack of investment in the shale patch and just generally throughout the energy sector? Shale, I mean, it's, it's, it's interesting. It's like you've sort of, it's been dismantled. It's Parts of rusted, you put it back together again, it's just not as effective in terms of productivity, in terms of production volumes. And ultimately, um, they've got used to returning cash and getting more popular with Wall Street. So you have to sort of think about what price do they need to cover their, all their capex, all their cash return, as well as a price that can necessarily see much bigger volumes of growth with all the money in the world, and that's much higher. That's closer to 80 to $90. So we're not seeing as much volume growth this year, closer to 700,000, 800,000 barrels, similar to next year, and I think that's the key. So right now, if you're not seeing production increase and you're actually seeing production cuts at OPEC+, Plus, mm -hmm. where does the marginal stop gap come in, right? We talk about the Strategic Petroleum mm -hmm. Reserve and how much the U.S. has already drawn down on some of those reserves, the speculation that they could tap them yet again, drain them mm -hmm. further in response to some sort of two million barrel production cut today. Is that bullet gone? Is it used? Absolutely. I think it's used. And, and you know, I love to talk about jewels. And we, we are, the world is short energy, right, across all fuels. And, and that's what we've been uh, talking through this year uh, and, with you, and, and with you. And I think the key here is if the marginal jewel, if you like, is. Is, is oil, then it's a bit like saying to your customers, look, I've got good news and bad news. The good news is I've got oil, you know, still got some energy. The bad news is you're going to have to pay a lot more for it. As inventory come down and that silver bullet from the US right. is already done, it ultimately becomes who's up for taking those barrels at the higher price. 